Tonight's episode of Twits is brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. <sighs> Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the week 16 edition of Blitz after a one-week hiatus. Uh, joining us once again from his palatial estate in Brownwood, Texas, the Bella Corolla Brownwood, also known as the Unabomber, Mr. Mike Paddock. How are you, sir? How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? Was it chilly down there or something? I got a new... Uh Got a new look for you that's going to go away after tonight. I don't know if you can see it, but I got the old uh, Zappa cooking. Whatever the hell a Zappa is, I'm sure it's good. The little uh, soul patch and a stash. Yeah, what thanks for taking care of my wife last weekend. Uh, she came back and told me I got to shave off the old soul patch, so I'm going back to the foo as soon as I can. All right, Mike, let's take a look at... Uh the uh, news and notes for week 16. Mike, it's uh, almost NFL playoff time, which means it's uh, almost uh, supple playoff time. Um, and we've got a couple of wild card drafts that will be happening after uh, the regular season ends. Uh, Mike, we're going to have the uh, normal wild card, card draft, which will be the 3, 4, and 5 seeds. That's going to take place Thursday, January 5th at 8.30 p.m. And new this year, uh, we have the uh, bottom five. So the bottom five teams are also going to be doing a draft. And um, that's going to help determine the uh, draft order for next year. So the bottom three teams in the uh, league by winning percentage will be involved in the wild card draft. And that's going to take place, Mike, the day before, Wednesday, January 4th at 8.30 p.m. Hopefully, I'm drafting Thursday. Uh, yeah, that's that's everyone's goal. Uh, the uh, so it'll be the bottom three teams, and then the three, four, and five seeds in the playoffs will will be the six teams that will be involved in that. So that's Wednesday the fourth and Thursday the fifth. Um, these drafts go pretty quick, Mike. It's just uh, I think it's about a. I don't know, what, about a half hour, I think these things take? Non-serpentine. Yes, non-serpentine, so... So, hey, the bottom right. playoff draft, are they drafting for the whole entire playoffs? Uh, it's the same structure as what the top half is doing. Um, so, the teams that finish once, the bottom three teams will be drafting, and then the two teams will advance to take on um, the fourth and fifth worst teams in the SFFL oh. in a regular draft. So basically they, they parallel one another. Gotcha. And then what happens is the the team that loses out of the bottom three in that wild card round is going to draft fifth, and then it's just from that point on it'll be however you finish in, in the in the regular draft, you'll you'll draft one through four. So You're only drafting the wild card weekend. What's that? You only draft wild card weekend that yeah, first draft. Yeah, draft wild card weekend, and then two of those three teams advance to the regular draft, which will take place the following week. Roger. Yep, that's it. So, so that is news and notes that will be posted on the site. But for everyone out there in the YouTube world, you know first. So, put that in your pipe, uh, Mike. Let's take a look at uh, the weekly rewind for week fifteen. Uh, we had Mickey taking on Fred, and uh, is that that is not a six pack or a twelve pack changing hands? Fifty six twenty seven. Just escaped one. Yes, uh, Tim Tebow uh, continues his uh, hit parade, runs a couple in, nineteen points for Mickey, and Aaron Rodgers chips in with fourteen, running in one himself uh, for Fred. Uh, Evan, uh, 71, Tim, 46. Uh, Roddy White chips in with 18 for Tim, and Matt Stafford, 19 for Team Tysburg. Uh, Jeff, 65, Greg, 40. Uh, Drew Brees chipping in with 23. Uh, and uh, Tony Romo chipping in with 19 for Greg. Mike, you were involved in a little uh, nip tuck affair. Came down to the Monday night blackout game, uh, forty-five, forty-two. You take out Wayne. 
It actually came oh, yeah. down to a phantom unsportsmanlike conduct call on the uh, Steelers during one of the one of the last uh, field goals. <laughs> really? That allowed Frank Gore to run one in for me and make make me win a winner chicken dinner. Dub dub CD. 45-42 is the final. Lynch, uh, 14 points for you. Brady, 18 for Wayne. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, we do have a 12-pack a changing hands here, Mike. Uh, Tom, 88, Thad, 42. That's uh, more than a double up. Uh, LaShawn McCoy, 23 points for Tom. And Rob Baronis with 8 points leading the way for Team Palmero. So that is the week that was for week 15. Mike, let's take a look at uh, what's coming up on tap for week 16. Coming up on tap, week 16, our five-star matchup hits the top two NFC teams against each other. Jeff, chicks dig scars, glory lasts forever. At 10-5, 857 points against Wayne Bago at 10-5, 923. Getting most of those points a couple weeks ago. All-time points for... Are in Jeff Spader at 1199 to Wayne's 946, and you lead that series 20 to 11. Not even close. Was that about a 666 uh, winning percentage there? Uh, probably like 630, I'm guessing. And you won the uh, last five to get to that point. It was, it was an on it was an on tap spotlight matchup combo, <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna dovetail nicely out of that, Mike, into a little segment we like to call skeptic or believer, Mike. The uh, game that's sweeping the uh, fantasy football nation. Among other radio shows as well, yes. Yeah. Uh, Mike, uh, we got uh, in the spotlight matchup there, we had owners um, that both had 10 wins. So a combined 20 wins after uh, 15 weeks. Are you a uh, skeptic or a believer? That that is the most points ever, or most combined wins ever between two owners heading into a Week 16 matchup. Uh, I'm probably skeptic. You're a skeptic on that. Yeah, I think this happened. I think there's been more than that because uh, you've had someone go undefeated at one point. So to think that that we had uh, a higher win total at some point. Well, Mike, you would be correct in that, uh, and but you would not be correct in your logic. The uh, the answer is 22, and it was actually you, Mike. 2009, you had 14 wins. Whoa. And hold on, let me, that, let me make sure that's right. Yes, 2009, 14 wins. And you took on Wayne, who had eight wins for a combined 22. I guess I wasn't worried about drafting on Thursday that year. Correct. Um, Mike, are you a uh, skeptic or believer? So that was that was uh, heading into to week 16. In terms of overall for the entire year, are you a skeptic or believer with the highest combined win total among owners? facing one another is 25. Um, and if you're a skeptic, you think it's a, a over or under that? No skeptic. I think it's probably under. You'd be incorrect, Mike. It's over. And ironically, Mike, you should... It's you again. Don't tell me it was me again. <laughs> That's right. 26. 2009, heading into week 17, you had 14 victories, and Mr. Tysburg had 12. Wow. wow. So, you should have bottled up 2009 and, uh... I thought I did, for, by uh, keeping Vic. Save that for a rainy day. By keeping Vic and drafting Andre Johnson in the first round, I thought I had a little bottle up this year. What do you mean? Yeah, best laid plan, you know? Let's take a look now, Mike, at uh, how they were built. They recently added segment to uh, the uh, banner podcast we have here. Yes, how they were built. Taking a look at uh, the Suds, uh, one of your Suds summary winners this week. Actually, the only one I think is Tom. And I want to take a look at him because he's been consistent all year. 
So I want to kind of take a little bit of a breakdown and see what he's done to get to that uh, level of points each week. But I just did a little research. He only has seven of the original, uh, what, 15 draft picks on his team. Well, I didn't look at kicker and defense, but he's only got seven of the, uh, what do you call, what do you call those guys? The uh, draft, original drafts? Oh, the, the positions. Oh, got it, yep. Yeah, the position players. He only has three or uh, seven of them left. And this last week, his, um, I'm going to bring this up quick, sorry. His totals, he started Matt Ryan, who was actually... Not Ryan. Not Ryan, it's Ryan. <laughs> who was actually... He drafted in round seven as his backup. He had kept Ben Roethlisberger from the previous year. So Matt Ryan comes through with 14 points. LaShawn McCoy, as you would expect, first-round draft pick. Big-time payoff this year, 23 points. Felix Jones picked up in round three, and guess what? He kept him all year because I was looking for him when uh, DeMarco Murray went down, but no. Tom was wise enough to keep him on his roster. As a third-round pick, he got him six. Kelvin Johnson drafted in round two, got him 22. Uh, Victor Cruz was a, a uh, free agent pickup. This week he only got him two, but he's been doing pretty well this year. Jimmy Graham drafted in round six. Uh, leading the, about to set the uh, receiving yards record for tight ends this year, so that was a hell of a pickup by him. And Steven Gos Goskowski, kicker, I do not know when he picked him up, but I think he would probably have been drafted. I did not have that information. So that is a uh, look at how they were built. <laughs> uh, speaking of other segments, Mike, let's take a look at this week's record setters. Uh, week 15 saw um, the Suffolk set the all-time record for most quarterback points in a week. 149 points, Mike. That's a ton. Um, that's uh, 15 points in order. That's impressive. Um, Tom rang up 31 bonus points, good enough for a fifth place all-time. Um, Tom also rang up 88 total points, good enough for sixth place all-time. And the uh, Suffolk, in addition to the quarterback uh, bonanza, also rang up 159 running back points. Uh, good enough for 10th place all time. The strange so, thing about those records is that if you look at the scores, it was feast or famine. Mm -hmm. You had people at 60 and above and freaking 40 and below. There's nothing really in between. Yep. Um, so that's the record setters for uh, week 15. Mike, uh, premium password, uh, as I posted on the site for week 16, it's snow. You know why, Mike? Because we don't have any up here. Neither do we. Well, I think you're probably going to get some before we do. We are we are currently forecasted to be above 40 degrees on New Year's Day. Well. So, although the guy on my pond behind me has got freaking 10 light poles already in the ice out there. So... I don't know what the hell. People are crazy up here, man. So, um, for week 17, Mike, this will be the last premium pass for of the year. Uh, it's going to be holidays. holidays. That's right, Mike. <laughs> Happy holidays to you and yours and everyone in the Suffolk. So, I thought that was we'll a good Madonna. Yeah, make sure you show you doing whatever the hell that was on the actual video. Um, I don't know what so, you're talking about. Nothing happened on the video. Uh-huh. And uh, so, yeah, that'll get you uh, premium content through the rest of the year. Um, Mike, let's take a look at the tertiary favorite segment of this episode, uh, Chalk Talk. Um, we remember a couple weeks back, we had uh, the commission taking New England minus 8.5, and, and that was a... Uh, bit of a downer. They ended up uh, winning by 7 at Washington. Do not cover. Move the commission to 7-5. and five. Once again, I don't think it should count, though, because I had to go outside my normal college realm to pick an NFL game, but we'll count it nonetheless. Uh, but the good news is, Mikey, we got college games back. Yes. yes. Part of the bowl challenge. If you are part of the bowl uh, challenge, you already know that. That's right. 
And this week, Mike, seems like I've done this a lot this year. I'm going to uh, stay in your, uh, well, I won't say home state, whatever temporary state, garden state uh, that you're in right now. And we're going to go with the uh, TCU Horned Frogs. They are taking on the Lennon Creer led Louisiana Tech, uh, whatever they are. And uh, they're this... laying nine and a half, Mike. What do you say? What tech is that? Louisiana Tech. Oh, isn't that uh, uh, Tremont Williams' well, school? Could be. I'm not going to dispute that. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, they're, they are laying less than 10, and TCU's defense uh, got shredded by Boise earlier in the year, and then uh, after that they have settled down. So I think... Uh, uh, Louisiana Tech, kind of a, a one-dimensional team, and I think TCU is going to be able to exploit that and uh, and win by by double digits. So take that one and uh, get your kids some extra Christmas presents and uh, enjoy. Mike, dog of the week, <laughs> makes its triumphant return. Uh, you pull the half game ahead of the commission, the uh, whatever we'll call this little battle here. Between Chalk Talk and Dog of the Week, seven four and one now after a uh, a Houston plus three victory. Uh, you had Houston plus three, and they uh, survived a furious Cincinnati comeback to win twenty to nineteen two weeks ago. What do you have for us this week in the Dog of the Week? Actually, what happened was you had to, unlike the previous week when the Raiders were done after the first quarter. You had to wait all the way to the end of the game for Houston to kick the game-winning field goal in order to cover for the uh, dog of the week. This week, we are going to go to a uh, little town I like to call Tennessee. Uh-huh. Your Tennessee uh, Oilers, your uh, Tennessee Titans are getting 7.5 at home against Jacksonville. Jacksonville is not that good, but... MJD is not going to let seven and a half points freaking uh, let them get beat by seven and a half. This is going to be a lot closer than that. I don't care what anyone says. We're taking uh, we're taking the Jaguars and that seven and a half. We're going into Tennessee and coming back with a dog victory. Okay, so Jacksonville seven and a half point dog. Take them on the road. Yes, I like it. Uh, Mike, game of the week. We both. Uh, Spit the bit last time. Uh, we took Dallas in that, uh, I believe, Sunday night game against the Giants, which the Giants won, I believe, 34 to 31. Moved the commission to 8 and 4, and Mike to 7 and 5. This week, Mike, we're at the Battle of the Big Apple. I don't know who the hell the home team is, but the Giants and Jets are playing. Uh, who do you like in that one? Neither. Both of those teams laid a freaking egg last week. But like you said, the Giants yeah. freaking go down to Dallas and win. Then they have the old hangover week and get destroyed. And the Jet, the Jets gave up 40 points for like the third or fourth time this year. It's a tough one to call. Um, I'm gonna have to go with the away team in that one. <laughs> I'm gonna take the Giants. Yeah, take the Giants. All right, Mike. Uh, I'm gonna give you. A, I'm gonna give you a shot here to to make up the to make up the game. Uh, basically because I don't have a fucking clue who's going to win this game either but uh, yeah both teams uh, completely laid an egg last week I don't know which one was bigger but uh, I got I to gotta hope that the Jets defense is a, a little bit better than it showed last week and hopefully it can slow down some of the uh, some of the receivers that the Giants are going to throw at them so I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, Jets in a, in a tight ball game let's call it Jets by four Mike that's what we're going with. All righty. All right. Well, that will just about wrap things up for the Week 16 edition of Twits. Uh, we will see you back here next week for the final regular season week, Mike. It's been a uh, quick year. So, uh, Boncher, get the, uh, get the Reuben sandwich out your mouth, get back to work, and we'll see everyone back here uh, next week for the final regular season week of Twits. Adios. Adios. Adios.